In our previous lesson, we actually looked at uh, various ways to create geometry, and then we came in and looked at shapes. And shapes, as you're going to learn, do not, they have no depth, so therefore they don't really exist in a 3D sense. You can see that if you go inside the perspective view, you'll notice that all of these shapes are kind of hollowed out. And uh, we haven't talked about rendering yet, but when you produce your rendering, uh, you're going to see that these objects don't show up because they haven't been given that property to be visible yet. Directly inside the modify panel of a selected spline, you have the ability to go into the word rendering. When you open up rendering, you're going to see the ability to enable in renderer and enable in viewport. And when you do this, you're pretty much telling Max that the spline is now like a tube or a cable or whatnot. And when we'd hit render to look at the final product, we're going to see just the outline. This doesn't fill in the text. We're going to learn how to do that in a moment. But what you're doing is you're pretty much just telling the lines to be solid tubes. And you can adjust over here the thickness, maybe you want it to be really thin, like a 0.25. The sides, maybe you want it like a 3. And, and by doing that, you're lowering the amount of geometry that's making up this object, which is always a good thing. You, you want to have the minimum amount of geometry at all times. But again, you're only doing like an outline. You're not filling this in. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to turn that off for now. And I'm back to my standard text here. And this is going to work for almost every object. We're going to go ahead and remove section out of the way. We're not going to work with that one. But I do want to show you uh, the first of many modifiers. And uh, a modifier is a, a specific task to apply to a uh, shape or an object to modify it. And uh, to keep it real simple, we'll start off here with the rectangle. And I'm kind of just floating in 3D space, but this can be done in any view. By selecting an object, I have the Modify tab, which is this blue bent pipe. I can go into what we call the Modifier list. And the Modifier list is a very long list of different manipulators that we can apply to this object to turn it 3D or do whatever. Now, some of them, in some cases, it's very blatant what they are. In other cases, you may have to experiment, and you may not even see anything happen to it based off of uh, what kind of geometry it is. Some modifiers are made for objects, while others are made for shapes. That's going to be the toughest part. You can't just go out and start. You can't bend the shape, because there's no depth to bend it in. So the very first modifier I'm going to show you, one of the most popular, is called Extrude. And what Extrude is going to do immediately when I click it is going to give this object a solid feature. Now, because I haven't defined how far to extrude, it's pretty much paper thin. But in the Modify panel now, you'll see that I have the original rectangle, and then in a layer form, I have the word Extrude above it. I can turn off the Extrude at any time by turning off the flashlight and the flash bulb, and that kind of tells me you know what it looks like from the original shape. But now, with the word extrude selected, highlighted, the parameters have changed from the original rectangle to the now manipulation of the object. I can go in and increase the amount of extrusion. And all I'm doing is I'm holding my left mouse down on the little arrow and, and dragging. And that's extruding the box in a series of directions. I can also go in and key the amount number here. Maybe I want it 15 units, and there we go. Now, you also have the ability to add the segments in there. And I know, we again, we mentioned that briefly, but I'm going to show you the benefit of doing that here shortly. But um, for the most part, you can go in and actually give this thing a thickness, and that's called extrude. Now, let's say we want to go back and change the original rectangle. I can do that by selecting the rectangle, and that's going to bring up the actual uh, parameters which I can go and change. And you'll notice that the extrude modifier is still attached to this object. It's still part of that. It does not go away. 
can also go in and maybe do like a corner radius and you'll see now what I'm doing with the original shape is I'm changing it and the extrude is updating I go back into extrude I can now change this and manipulate this some more the next shape modifier I, I want to show you which is probably probably one of the most important ones for you to acknowledge is um, the edit spline and I kind of went I'm gonna go back to that we talked a little bit about when you draw a uh, spline and you hit modify you actually have the ability to change its vertex segments and whatnot but when you sp select on like text for instance you're going to notice that you don't have that ability well you do you just have to designate that as one of the modifications and I'm gonna go ahead and select the text here I'm gonna go ahead and choose modify and in the modifier list I'm gonna use the modifier called edit spline and when we use edit spline we now have the ability to take any form of text or any shape at all and manipulate its original spline so maybe I want to do something like this where I want to do some abstract text um, where I, I want to just kind of take the original text and kind of manipulate it some uh, maybe do something like this uh, so that it's kind of um, it's unique it's not going to be necessarily what we originally had been stuck with and uh, maybe I'll even want to do something like this so now I have the ability to go in and actually manipulate the text and this is going to be one of one of your project options is 3d graffiti and you'll use this method to manipulate your your 3d graffiti to for a unique look um, but now that we've actually went through and created a, um, a unique spline we could extrude this text all right we can go and add more than one mod modifier on there I could go and do an extrude and you'll notice when you apply a second extrusion to an object in your scene it automatically inherits the previous extrusion amount that's okay we can go back and change that just by choosing modify and say you know what I only want my text to stick out a little bit and extruded text is it's pretty it's pretty popular but I'm going to show you a better way to do that now I'm going to go ahead to remove a modifier and this works for any object or shape I can right click on the layer and choose delete don't actually click on the object and hit delete you're going to delete the object but right click and delete the modifier you're taking that 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 layer out of there so to say and now we're back to the original spline select the object again the next modifier I want to show you is called bevel now bevel is tricky bevel is a lot like extrude in fact it is extrude on several different levels the bevel values down below allow you to extrude three different levels so for instance if I go to level one and I just I, I bring that height out I'm extruding but you're also going to notice that if I choose a level two I can extrude again and then the outline number is actually a taper so if I do like a negative number here I'm tapering in on my text now unfortunately what's going to happen if I taper in too much you're gonna see this this is gonna get real ugly really fast and that is that when one vertex crosses another vertex and two lines cross each other you get this kind of manipulation and, and, and it doesn't max doesn't know what to do it's like folding yourself inside yourself does it's not possible so the bevel tool is really neat if you're using like a thicker text or for that matter any shape but be careful of that you also have another level you could go and extrude that out even more or you could do a negative extrusion which go takes it inside the actual model and then again you can also work with the various beveling tools bevel is a great tool to actually use for your 3d logo um, or through your 3d graphic um, graffiti or, or whatnot that you choose now we're gonna go ahead and look at one more uh, well let's do this let's go up I'm gonna extrude this shape here now this is a closed I'm sorry this is an open shape where the star is a closed shape so if I go to the star and I put an extrusion on that it fills it in solid if I come to this shape the helix 
the points don't intersect with each other. So when I go to do an extrude, you're going to notice that it's only going to extrude the line, not the solid shape inside there. Very different from what you have below here. Now, you may come across the instance where, well, you know what? You got this, but you didn't want that. So what I'm going to do is show you one last trick here with the actual um, edit spline tool. And let's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a reset. I'm going to wipe this all out, and I'm not going to save it. And I'll start from scratch. But let's say um, we had in the front view, we have a the line tool, and we have drawn this shape, and we forgot to close it. Now, again, if we come back here, and we do an extrude, You're going to see that we have this open. And again, this happens often. You'll be like, wait a minute, why? Well, uh, there's a couple reasons. One is the spline is not closed. Or two, as I mentioned earlier, you may have two points cross over each other. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment as well. But here, uh, how do we fix this? Well, we go back to the line. And because the line auto automatically has this manipulation option in here. We don't have to worry about it. If we were using a very basic shape, we'd have to go in and put an edit spline command on there, which would give us the ability to do this. But you'll notice that if I go into the vertex mode, we have these two points should be to, could be connected to each other. And you can do your best to get them as close as you want. And I'll even come out here and zoom in. And you can keep going and going and going, but they're never going to connect to each other unless you select both of them. And I'm just dragging a window around them. Both are selected. And I'm going to actually manipulate them so that they're kind of facing each other, uh, getting them pretty close, because that's an important part of the merging process so that you got a nice smooth point there. But now, I've got both of them selected. I actually have an option down here called Weld. Now, if you hit Weld, and all of a sudden nothing happens, you're going to notice that that's good because now the two points are one. You click on it, and they've combined to one. If they're not close enough, you're going to get a message that says, Cannot Weld, No Vertices Connected. If that's the case, just increase this number. And what that's doing is going out within a certain amount of pixels and grabbing the pieces together. So that's a great way. Now that we've closed our spline, you'll notice in the extrude option, we now have a solid object. And that's all we did was just close the spline by editing the two vertices and merging them together. So you can create various lines and attach them together. Well, what we did there was we actually had one spline that we attached to itself. Here's another example. Take a line and create one shape. Then take another line and create another shape. In this plane, they're all equal, so this is going to work out nice. But I can't extrude this area because, one, these are two different shapes. And two, they're not connected at the various points. Step one is to take one of the splines, hit Modify, and you'll notice there is the Attach option. When you select Attach, you can hover over another line and attach the two lines together. Now, if I go in and I do an Extrude, what are we going to see? You're still going to see that hollowness because we're still missing these pieces. No problem. Go back to the line. We'll zoom in here, slide down. We're going to take the Modify tool. We're going to go ahead and try to bring these two points together as close as we can. Select them both, and choose the Weld option. Next, we're going to take this piece of text, put it over here. Select them both, hit the Weld option. Now I can go back to Extrude, and you'll see that that is working just fine. Now, one last demonstration here before we move on. I take this line tool, and I create this shape, this very odd shape. I close the spline. So when I hit close the spline and I do an extrude, 
you're going to notice that even though it's a closed spline, it's still hollow. And that's because at this point here, we've got overlapping, and that's not good. Go back to the original line. Now, just by moving this outside this area and going back to extrude, you'll see now that they're solid. So anytime you do an extrusion, or a bevel for that matter, of a shape that you think is closed, be careful because you may have some little vertices crossing, and that happens a lot in text. Some fonts have overlapping vertices that create that illusion. One last shape man manipulation for this video, and that is where we're going to go in, and I'm going to create a shape. We'll do, I don't know, we'll do this, 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 something like that. And with this shape, I'm going to create, or use a modifier called lathe. What lathe does is it spins the shape in a, in a rotating format, like a revolving format. And though this isn't what I wanted, you'll notice that there are a min, a center, and a max alignment options, as well as directional options here. So, you're going to get a lot of different abstract pieces, but that's kind of what I was shooting for there, was taking that shape and spinning it 360 degrees. What we've created here is just a mesh, and again, these faces, we'll talk about that in a future, of how we can manipulate those faces, but we can also, with the lathe tool, we can choose um, a ver variety of different options here. We can cut the piece into a form, we can also mess with the different segments. Uh, one good way to use this tool is uh, if you're doing an interior architectural project for a residential area. If you want to do like the spindles on a railing, you can draw a, a section view of that spindle and spin it. And uh, that will be a, a good direction for you to go. So this is going to conclude this video, which is pretty much going to cover the basic modification of shapes. In your next video, we're going to look at using modifiers to manipulate geometry.